Belinda and Shannon take one. Then we can say, I told you to do that. Yeah, she told me to push the record button. <laughs> Only one thing is ever guaranteed. That is that you will definitely not achieve your goal if you don't take the shot. That's who, like said, hockey. who said that? Green Gretzky. You, she is right. I did I not tell her it. I was reading I that. I know it. <laughs> Today, shot callers, we are helping you line up the shot. One of the frust frustrations many women have relayed to me over the course of my banking career is that they weren't invited into a conversation about stocks. They don't feel comfortable because they don't have the vocabulary or the insight they feel they need. With this new series, my aim is to give you a water cooler view of two people talking about the market. You need to get a water cooler. Yes. It's as simple as that. We will bounce ideas off each other, challenge each other, commiserate together, and definitely rib each other. Let me tell you a little bit about Bull Market B. B is from Canada, and we do make lots of US Canada jokes about each other. B loves hockey. That's probably a vast understatement. B was in a rock band and traveled around Canada. We have the pictures to prove it. B teaches kids in our community piano and guitar and a little ukulele. And she reluctantly recently agreed to teach one adult guitar class mm. a week, <laughs> including me. And currently she's teaching us living on a prayer. B is Taiwanese. Like dead or alive. Oh, <laughs> shoot. Is that a good song? Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Same band. Oh, different song. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Yes. B is Taiwanese, born in Hong Kong. Well. Is that right? No. That's well, not right either? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. You it's don't all know. confusing all right. because <laughs> maybe you I'm were Canadian. Oh, she's Canadian for sure. Um, when B is not playing video games, she is watching CNBC, Squawk Box, and yes. some other investment TV. B and I love to talk about stocks, themes, markets, price points, etc. I don't know where this conversation is going to go, but I can guarantee it'll probably be entertaining. Entertaining. Welcome, Bull Market B, to the Shot Caller Podcast. Thank you. Bull. Bull. Bull friend. Um, Tell everybody a little bit about yourself, not in my own words, um, how, as well as how you got into trading and investing. You know what? I didn't know how to do any of this stuff before. Like my parents were not stock people. And uh, however, when I was working, I used to work construction. Um, oh yes, I love that. Um, but I, me and my friend, I have a friend, Steve, who uh, still works for Lafarge. He, we used to talk about, you know, how do we make extra money or how do we, and he actually is quite, um, I'd like to say educated because he knows a, a lot more than me and I'm like the big cowboy. I'd like, oh, you are let's a cowboy. just buy this because I cowboy. feel like it, you know? And he's like, no, 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 you gotta look at the balance sheet and you gotta make sure they have money in the bank. I'm like, whatever, <laughs> you know? You'd have to take that. I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyways, um yeah that i started talking that's to him and that's how i started okay. so he said okay you well actually we started in university too oh okay. but this is right after university yeah. so it's around the same time where we said okay let's all throw in in university it was imaginary money okay. so let's throw in one thousand imaginary dollars into something oh, and then when i started working with steve we did the real thing oh. right and, and i think one of my very earlier things was air canada see this is an example of my cowboy attitude and he's like no <laughs> Air Canada was yang. was was going uh, well in the Canadian version of chapter 11 yeah Air Canada and uh, it went down to two dollars from I don't remember what back back in around 2000 okay and I said I'm gonna buy this and he's like no no don't do it and uh, I did and I made money on it and then I did that twice okay and uh, because I'm like the... You were feeling it. I feel it. And how, I, how do you know when to sell? Or when did you decide? Did I you just, say, if I, I just, make 20%, I'm out? Or you just watch no, the stock? I'm not and, that disciplined. Okay. And this is how I lost some. Right, I'm going to uh, get you a, um, uh, 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 a guitar uh, stick. <laughs> a drum, a drum stick. Star. A guitar stick. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm not, not my the, best I, music student. I'm not, I'm not the musical one. <laughs> <laughs> a guitar stick. 
<laughs> I knew what I meant. I knew what I meant. It could be, it could right. be onset dementia. <laughs> I need to start looking into that. Okay. But yeah, so this is what, how I started. I just, I just went, you know what? These people are going to fly Air Canada. It's got the little maple leaf. They're yeah. not going to get rid of that. Yeah. The bank's going to help it out. The government will help it out. For, so for those listening, just to, to put in a little financial um, context around that, yeah. that you could describe that trade as either sort of a contrarian trade, meaning big you word. were going against. That's a big word. <laughs> That's a big word. A contrarian trade is that you're going against what the the group is doing. Yes. You're taking you you sort of see see you know you, you basically use your own metrics. You thought they're not they're not going to let this airline go out of business, no. and I think they'll make it. And so you went against the group, right? Yes. Okay, so that's what we'd kind of call in the biz contrarian okay. trade, or um, you know, kind of uh, down and out, or um, you know, there's a, many t- people undervalued perhaps, or maybe it wasn't undervalued, but you just felt that was it, it, it would turn around. Turn around play, that's another. I just turnaround. figured it wasn't gonna go to zero. Okay, so that's good. Um, so we are playing around with this format a little bit here and um, we're not really preparing ahead of time what we're going to discuss yeah. because we want it to be kind of fresh. But I wanted to ask you a quick question about what, what you thought about the Ant Financial IPO um, listing. Or, or uh, announcement of a listing. It's coming out, hopefully, they say in August, right? Or in August. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm hoping I didn't it comes that. out any time. But it won't come out of, it won't come out of, um, they, they're not going to list it on the U.S. or Europe. Or right. Europe. It's Shanghai they're, they're, and, and, Hong Kong. and Hong Kong. I think, uh, yeah, I think because um, the president of the U.S. is kind of unpredictable. <laughs> right. <laughs> She's American. I have to be diplomatic. No, you don't. No, you do not. You do not have to be diplomatic. You don't. Um, okay. So just again, I'll interject a tiny, quick second. Yeah. That's what we would call a dual listing, okay. where a stock will trade on two different markets, and they plan to trade both on the uh, Shanghai market as well okay. as on the Hong Kong. Um, well, you know, market. I have a question for that later. Oh, okay. Well, because I don't understand these things that she does. Right. I just kind of go with the flow. But she actually understands how things happen. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, not everything. I'll ask about that later. Okay. Uh, about the dual listening thing. But right now, with Ant, what I like about Ant is, yes. remember when we went to China a couple years ago? Yes, I do remember. And everywhere I saw, I saw, and I had already owned Alibaba at this time, because I, I watched them right from IPO. Were we talking about that at the point or not? I can't remember if we I, had those discussions I, or not. I think so. Okay. Well, I pointed out the somebody because I, I saw it everywhere ali pay yeah was everywhere and i was really happy at that time because i had owned a, a lot of in my portfolio my own a lot to me is not a lot of people <laughs> no 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 that, but in my own portfolio i had a big big chunk of alibaba in there and i was really happy to see ali pay everywhere well just just to let everybody know um ali pay you, you you guess how many users do you think are on ali pay i don't know I'd say, I don't know. Do you know? One billion. Nice. See, it's... I mean, actually, I need to fact check that because that's more than the amount of people in China. But, of course, other people using Ali, well, Alipay besides... Well, they're trying to... Well, I don't... I think there's some... It, it's users it's in Europe, something like 900... Let's see. I, I did a little research yeah, here. You're in the billions. You can round a couple of thousand. Yeah. <laughs> No, actually, okay, that's about right because I think in a different in a different article it said nine hundred million users in China. So a billion is probably the global the other the global yeah. number, um, which is a striking number. That's awesome. And just to put that a little bit into context, um, we would call that um, M commerce, yeah. mobile commerce. So you have e commerce. This this term and, and you'll hear it more and more is M commerce yes. and <laughs> and in the U S it's estimated in t- 2020 by the end of this year the total value of M commerce of uh, commerce M commerce in yeah. America will be 20, 284 billion. Now, can you guess what the um, M commerce is in China? Oh, no. In 2018. No. 67 trillion. Wow. I know. I was shocked. And and on the show notes for this podcast, I'll link it to the articles where I found that. That that particular number came from, I believe, Business Insider Intelligence. Um, so 
America this year will do 284 billion, yeah. it, which is a record year, a big number. And that's 45% okay. of the entire e-commerce market. So M-commerce is 45% of the e-commerce now, but 67 trillion worth of transactions took place on mobile phones in China yeah. in 2018. You know, I mean, this is, it's, I think it's insane. I think it's that this is Jack Ma is he's the guy's. Yeah, he's like the Gretzky. Of, <laughs> he's the, you know, Gretzky. he's the Gretzky. <laughs> he's of, the Gretzky of, of Chinese. What the Chinese, Chinese? It's just anybody. Well, that's true. You know, it would be interesting for us to, I was thinking that Jeff Bezos would be the, oh, yeah, that's true. Because of Amazon was there first. But I think he lucked into that though. He didn't what? think himself in. I think he no. started. I think it started with books, right? And well, it did start with yeah. books. <laughs> it started with books, and yes. then he went. Oh, wait a minute, I can sell maybe toilet paper too or something, and it just grew because. But he it, didn't luck into it. He well, had a vision. All right, all right. <laughs> he 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 sees where the market's going. Yeah, and he's in, they're investing heavily um, into into their. Uh, out, uh, Amazon. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. I, I own Amazon. I'm we all... need a board so we can keep track of points. <laughs> Shannon won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I got this one. Yes, she's got that one. We I guitar, apologize. This to is the, not we a guitar. Are videotaping stick. this. Videotaping. See, she I dated only, myself. She only threw this on me today. No, I didn't. You said it was a podcast. It is a podcast with video. <laughs> but for the people listening, she keeps playing with pens and I gave her a drumstick, not a guitar stick, but a drumstick. And that's where the noise is coming from. So I apologize. <laughs> anyway, okay. I have another question for you. I was wondering, I had not come across this term. Is it? Okay. Do you know what Fang Man is? Uh, well, fang Man fang stocks? Is. Let me think. Yeah. So, okay, so, so see if got, you can figure it out. We yeah. got Facebook. Yes. Amazon. Yes. Netflix. Yes. Google. Yes. There's another Apple. A. Apple, yeah. M. M. Oh, Microsoft. Seattle. Yes. yes. Yeah. And there's one more. Oh, there's one. It's more. an N, and you know N. it. You know it because you need it to play all your video games. I need it to play all my video. You need games. a very good processor. M. N for November. N for November. Not. You know it. You know this one. Intel. No. N. Not Starts with an N. Nvidia. Yes. Yeah. One for Belinda. <laughs> she got it. That's right. So that's a new term for the 2020 uh, COVID. Yeah. Because of um, all the, I guess somehow you could add Zoom to that one maybe. Um, bangs. Bangs. Bangs, man. Bangs, man. Who anyway. started this bang thing? I think. Uh, I think Jim Cramer did. That's it's possible. Kind of thing, yeah. You can look up that and we can I, give him credit if that's I, appropriate. I think he did. Okay. I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll check. We'll check. I don't think that we want to give so everybody their, their, their credit. We want to give them their credit. Um, okay. So did you have any more to say about ants? You know what? Would yes. You, you would I, buy the IPO. I, you know if what? You could. Okay. I can't buy the IPO because I trade on a North American, what do you call it? I trade Ex TD. Exchange. Exchange. Who do you uh, trade, trade with? TD. Maybe we can get that to sponsor. Yes, <laughs> we'll work on that. We'll work on that. And I, because I trade North American, I cannot buy Shanghai stocks or Hong Kong stocks. But oh. Oracle, are you, you sure? can buy Oracle or Microsoft, and they're they're the two bidders that are looking to buy Ant. So they're going to be trying to try and not Ant, uh, yeah, but buy you the share. Oh, oh, they're going to buy. Oh shit! You know, are you talking about TikTok? I just, yeah, no, oh. I mixed up TikTok. Yeah, okay. No, that, TikTok. no, I mixed up TikTok and Ant right now. Okay, but that's a different. So, for so, people out there that would like to take um, advantage of the yeah, growth in TikTok, up. potentially, if Microsoft or Oracle yes. were to, am I allowed to swear? Yes. You oh. Can say shit. Okay. Oh, good. Um, can you find a place that I think you can buy Ant through? But do you know your question on dual listings? Not yet. I'll go there later. Okay. No, right I was just going to explain, explain that to you. Oh, yeah, fine. yeah. No, no, no. I just want to stick with Ant. Okay. Please. Stick with Ant. You know, because I'm a wolf. Focus. And She's I a one stop. Focus. I, I cannot focus. Okay. <laughs> I think I have ADD. <laughs> okay. Just only invest your own money. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but Ant, oh, and now I can't remember what I was going to say with Ant. But since we're on TikTok. Because you wanted by the, uh, we were talking about the IPO. Yeah. It's supposed to be coming out, and I'd like to know how to get my hands on it. Well, we'll. we'll but 
Okay, well, we'll look into how you can buy that because that, that seems strange that you wouldn't be able to trade that. But um, anyway, we will, we will we try and keep our, our eyes and ears out for uh, the listing and let everybody know when that's happening in case anybody's interested to just, to just follow that story. Because as we've just said, the numbers are astounding. Uh, whether you love China, hate China, don't know anything about yeah. China, you, you, you should not in your portfolio ignore such a massive financial opportunity. Now, I'm not telling you to go up, run out and buy ant stock, but I think I you am. need to. <laughs> yeah. I am. <laughs> She's a private citizen. She can do that. Um, but what I, I guess what I want to say is that, is that you, you don't want to ignore the space one way or the no other, whether way. you buy an e-commerce ETF or, um, but talk to your advisor or whoever you, yeah. you know, who, whoever you, you get advice from about, the, the opportunity in that market because e-commerce and commerce the mobile commerce these are explosive growth opportunities especially in especially, corona right especially because now i pay i don't like to touch things anymore i just use my yeah. my phone i've got my cards in the back of my spec phone case and i just go near yeah the what do you call that little what the little the, wi the, like wireless, the wireless yeah the yeah. touch free thing and that's all m commerce yeah she is a germaphobe, which is kept, I am a kept her healthy during yeah. Corona and me uh, as well. I'm, yeah, I just don't even like sitting this close to her. <laughs> no. Sorry. We're, I live next door. I have to be we're clean. To we both took Corona tests before we came on today. That's right. No, we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So let's talk about what other stocks you like or we can talk about I'll tell you what I just bought. the market. Oh, yeah. Tell us what you just bought. I just bought Oracle. Can okay. Just, now that we're on that, where I got confused. Yeah. <laughs> I just bought. I just bought Oracle. Okay. What's Oracle trading at? Tell us. What's the it price? Was at fifty-six. Okay. When I bought it, so let me just pull it up. It was at fifty-six. I bought it. Right now. Today it's at fifty-six. So I yeah. haven't really moved. What's the year high and the year low? Uh, let me pull it up. She's pulling it up. Oops, Let's see the range. The 52-week range looks like 39.71 to 57.84. Yeah, so, so it's, it's at the higher end of its range. The price to earnings ratio is 18. Um, I'm not sure what the historical price to earnings ratio for Oracle is. Price targets for, off of we're looking at Yahoo Finance. The one-year price target is about 55. Um, <clears throat> Nasdaq is on a tear at the moment, and uh, Oracle is not as overpriced, shall we say, it as exactly Tesla. Right which is on a price to earnings ratio of 1000. That means you are paying 1000 times for the stock exactly. per earnings per share. But, um, I need to get my head around why yeah, that stock is trading at a thousand, exactly. a thousand times earnings. But I think it's all the hype. With this, oh, we can go to EVs later. Yeah. But with Oracle, what I like about Oracle is that it, it, it is, it, it hasn't, had any hype from this bid by TikTok, right? So it is still where it should be in, I, I think. Okay. This is my opinion. What <laughs> does it say there what their growth rate is? We'll have to, we might have to look at an analyst report I about that. I don't know. Um, they've got a small dividend actually. We've got a 1.7% dividend. Look at that. That's not bad. That. <laughs> That's not yeah. too bad in today's but, low interest rate. But if you look at it, the only fluctuation from where it is the average price is around, let's say, 55, is because of Corona, right? That's yeah. the only anomaly. So if you go into work, if I, like, I went to work because it's, I'm not going to lose. It's a stable company. It's a stable yeah, company. Yeah, it's a very stable and company. That's what we call a blue chip company. It's but been it around a long time, good cash flow. To really pick up their earnings growth because of TikTok. With TikTok. Yeah, they I like get that. TikTok. They could, this is why I bought it. Okay. I was like Microsoft. You know, I would have liked to buy Microsoft a long time ago. Do you know why Microsoft is interesting? And I'm not talking about whether it's a buy right now because I haven't right. looked at the price. You know, I haven't done my own research on it. But one of the reasons why Microsoft has been so strong is because of their cloud computing business. Yeah. Is it the Azure cloud, I believe it's called, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and they are um, really dominating in that space. And so okay. that is... a. Uh, um, B2B business, so corporate, their clients are corporations yeah. and who's storing all, all our, um, you know, enormous amount of data that we're storing um, yeah. in the cloud. So that's Microsoft, one of the reasons why they're, why they're growing, why the stock has done well. But again, I don't know about whether, you know, it's a good buy at the moment. But I'm 
I don't know about you, yeah. but I'm feeling unusually bearish On. because of the market ignoring potential future financial um, contraction over coronavirus. Um, now, I know the market is favoring companies that can do well in this environment, but <clears throat> it feels to me very bubbleish. Well, you know what? Moment. I totally agree with you because, you know, right now we're in Corona. But this week, since for the last five, five days around, everything is going through the roof. We're at the all time high, it seems, of many, many companies. Yeah. And to me, it's just, it's almost like a false sense of security for a lot of people that they're like, oh, you know, Corona, we've got a vaccine coming. Yeah. So they think, they hope, we all hope. However, everybody's kind of going out and they're buying things that, you know, when the third quarter comes out, I'm wondering if it's still going to be yeah. reflecting some of this. Well, um, the, I, the other thing that, that some people are throwing around out there is that one of the reasons these stocks keep um, going higher at the moment, especially the tech stocks, is because of short sellers covering their positions. So you've got, now that's a, a whole other topic, short selling, but you can, if you are negative on a stock or a market even, you can actually sell stock that you don't own. So let's just say, let's just use Oracle because I've got the numbers right here. Let's say you think Oracle is not going to buy TikTok and that it's going to go down in price. So you'd sell it at, let's say, $56 a share. You don't own the stock, so you sort of borrow the position from your broker. And you hope to buy it back at, let's say, $50 a share. And then you have a $6 profit. So it's the reverse of wanting a stock to go up. You actually want it to come down. So throughout this let's I'll say, for lack of a better word, Corona rally in the tech stocks. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of uh, hedge funds, a lot of institutions, and probably individuals by um, um, taking short positions on tech stocks. And as they've gotten wrong, because tech, theoretically, you can have an unlimited loss. If the stock keeps going up, you've sold it, you've sold stock that you don't own, and now you have to buy it back to cover your short position at a higher price. So if the trade goes against you, you've sold Oracle for 56 and you have to buy it back for $60 a share. So you lose $4 a share there. And the bank doesn't give you unending credit. Is it like an option? Is it, is there a time? No, to it? in option, there's a time. If yeah. you just purely short the stock, there's no time frame. Okay. The bank might decide there's a time frame and say, you know, you basically you have to put margin yeah. on the trade. So you, yes. you, you have to deposit a certain amount of money to cover Okay. the potential loss of the trade and the bank that's where you get uh, margin calls and things like that but um anyway so that's just that's something that i've heard I, I it would be interesting we can both go back and do a little research and, and look at the short because you can look up that you can look yeah. up what's the short position on the stock and get a little bit of an idea um can you just switching gears a little bit can you yeah. pull up starbucks yes Cause some um Wall Street firms are upgrading Starbucks at the moment. Really? Starbucks is a different story. It's not a tech stock. So look at the year high and year low. Do a one year on the chart there. Or, yeah. or a five, yeah, one year. See? So, so Starbucks is starting to be upgraded because, as you can imagine, during Corona, they had to close a lot of stores. Mm -hmm. And that, that certainly will have caused an impact on them financially. Um, this is why I don't understand the upgrade on it. I just read very sideways, okay, on Starbucks, one of the areas that is a growth area for them, which is, is an industry close to my heart, is the alternative <laughs> dairy and meat right. areas. And they are embracing this. Love you, Starbucks. Um, they're embracing this. And they just um, put Beyond Meat yes. in, um, made it uh, available in all their Chinese Starbucks. So that's, that's one area of potential growth, but we'll have to look at that and see what are the other reasons. It could be that people think that it's, it's undervalued now because maybe they... But it hasn't really dropped that much. You see what I mean? It's An undervalued stock fit. would be like, you know, like it hasn't really dropped much. Okay. It's, it's got a fairly high PE ratio of 73 times. It's got, it's got a 2% dividend on it. So you're earning 2% a year just owning this, just holding the stock. It's year high is 83, what is it? 83, year low 79. So yeah. it's not a very volatile stock. It's not, it's not having big, huge swings, which is 
another reason why people like it in the portfolio. I know, but however, during Corona, yeah. I bet you they've lost, I don't know how much money. Yeah. Well, right? they it's gonna, it should have showed, it should be showing in their quarterlies is what I don't understand. Um, it, could, it could also be, I think they're also shutting stores. So they're reducing the volume. So that, that cuts some losses, but yeah, it doesn't, you know. We'll have to see, we'll have to see. Yeah. Um, I have a little, you're iffy on that, that one. Yeah. Not, she's not sure about. I'm stars. not big on that one. Right okay, now. that's fair enough. Yeah. What else? What else are you keeping your eye on? You know what? I've just been watching this last week with all these things, but I want to. I want to talk about. Oh, we have time. About? Did you get a moment? About? <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about Tesla and okay. EVs because I, there's a lot of interesting things happening. Mm, tell us. And I, there's a lot of IPOs coming out. There's some IPOs that just happened six months ago. And they've done really well. I Let think. me just very quickly. I know a lot okay. of people so know what an IPO is. Oh, sorry. An IPO. Um, I know a lot of people know this, but I really want this this segment, our series, to be very inclusive. An IPO, which I teach in my teen stock market class as well, giving myself a little plug, there you go. Um, is an initial public offering, and it's when a company sells shares for the very first time to the public, and the, then for the first time, the public can buy the shares because they're not private anymore. So that's what an IPO is. And Belinda really likes to invest in IPOs or new companies. You're definitely a growth investor, right? Yes. We, would, we would call you a growth investor. Okay, sure. so go for it. Okay, so Tesla, they've been going through the roof. And I remember a friend of ours had said, oh, you know, what do you think of Tesla? And it was, Who's that? was it? Judy. Judy asked about Tesla. Remember? Mm -hmm. And then I, it was, I think it was, just gone over a thousand somewhere let's say 1200 1500 who knows and i said no 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 don't I do it i think we both did yeah <laughs> i'm like don't do i don't duty. understand um the fundamental i don't understand any fun fundamental yes but my do. feeling <laughs> wasn't so good on that and then now it's 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 well over two grand two thousand and i'm like you know, did I give her bad advice? Well, she's this, yeah, this friend is not an experienced investor and in, for her to go out and buy a, yeah. a, a stock like Tesla I wouldn't do it early anyways. out of the gates is, yeah. is, 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 we were being cautious there and I think that was the right thing to do. I, I think, I, but I still don't understand it. But anyway, so I started looking and listening to, you know, Squawk Box and, and all these really, you know, good guys. And you know, there's a bunch of, there's like a couple IPOs that came out like six months ago, like mm -hmm. Nikola. Nikola. Well, they've doubled. Okay. Okay. Since they come out six months so ago. So these guys are not making, they're, making, they're um, making the batteries, some of them. Uh, you know what? I have to look at, there's, there's so many. Yeah. Fisker. Um, I know Fisker personally helped they, raise money for the um, um, Fisker, um, the, the first iteration. Um, he's now coming back with a new business. Uh, yeah. I was raised. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I actually accidentally introduced him to his wife. So that's a little Oh, you fun. know Fisker. I do actually know him. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I, because... I, met, I met him when we were raising money for him. We were, I was in the London office and we were helping out with the, with the venture capital round. Yeah. Um, I pers Alex and I personally invested, lost every penny um, because the battery technology, not because his design was bad, but because the battery that they used was not um, good enough and it, took the whole company down, unfortunately. Oh, no. So where are they at now? But well, they're not start? publicly traded. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah. But that's he's, why they're not, but, they're not but on my he's list. come back now. You know, he's learned a lot from that experience and come back, come back to, you know, kind of do the next generation. So, okay, good. Yeah. Because I think you can buy them through, like, you can't buy them directly, obviously, right now. Yeah. But I, I don't know if I read it somewhere. If, but if you buy the Renaissance ETF called IPO, that is the ticker. Oh yeah, you mentioned that to me because that's, I bought. That's how I bought, and or how you well, it's, it's not no, trading I, yet. No, 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 you can't. I bought Renaissance. Yes, the IPO, IPO. Put the, that put that it. symbol up there. How 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 transparent are they in what they're what they're buying, what they're investing in? Let's see. Let me find it because this is the stuff I own in, right now. Unless it's that's what it was. I bought IPO, not uh, yeah, Oracle. Speak speak. Oh, sorry. I bought IPO. Uh, I'm so just facing the wrong way here. Yeah. So interestingly, I um, I didn't know about the CTF. <laughs> Belinda told me about it, which is great. And it's called it's it's symbol. If you look up on Yahoo Finance, is actually IPO. So for people like Belinda, who um, know the risks, who understand the market, that it this is the on the more 
speculative side of investing, and we are not telling you to go, IP, go buy IPO, but for those interested, this is a great um, way to access deals, which normally us mere mortals are not getting access to yes. because the investment banks give their allocation of shares to their biggest customers, which are usually institutions. But this is how you can buy ant. Did they announce that they're Parts going to ant. get, I, this, I, again, I read it somewhere or watched it somewhere where Renaissance IPO, this ETF will be going. So maybe they've been given an allocation. Other, or, yeah, yeah, or they're going to go out to these other markets and buy it. Yes. I can't do it, but they can. Oh, they're going to, okay. So you there's, what I'm saying? yes, 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 yeah. yes. Okay. So they, they, either they buy it once it goes public in Shanghai and Hong exactly. Kong. Exactly. Or they get an allocation on the pre IPO shares. Something so like that. So one of the two things. The details, probably. I don't know because I don't understand them. Okay. Well, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> we would not want to unleash you out into the market. <laughs> <I know. laughs> you never know. Full, make a lot of money. Full disclosure. Yes, that's right. <laughs> She's not a financial <laughs> professional. She is an everyday investor, and that's what we that's want right. to do is teach everybody out there listening that anybody can get involved investing, but you do ultimately have to understand your liquidity, your risk tolerance, all these sorts exactly. of things. I'm just pumping the brakes a little yes. bit, but I, 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 I do love her, her sentiment. I did the same thing with Facebook at IPO. Yeah. Everybody said, don't do it. Oh, I did 10 times. Nice. 10 times. I do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, regulators, it's her fault. <laughs> Anyway, right. no, but what we're doing is giving you um, something to do some research on, something to talk yes. about, something to think about. So all of these are just ways for you to hear from everyday ladies who are out there and doing some investing that we are inviting you into the conversation, into our weird right. stock market conversations. Okay, so I got a couple more e EVs. Oh, okay, go ahead. Sir. Got Canoe. Canoe. I think that's coming out soon. Okay. But I saw a segment where their their vehicles are almost symmetric. There's no, there's almost I'd say right now there's still like a steering wheel and stuff, but it's built so that it can in the future look like a little pod of a bus. Oh, and because in the future if you don't, so need, it could be adapted. If it's automated, you, yes. To but, um, yeah, if it's automated in the future, vehicle or something like that. Yeah, like you don't need a front and a back. You don't need a trunk and a oh, hood. Interesting. Right, because that's electric. Can, is that that's the symbol, symbol or the that's symbol the actual C name? N O O. So they already have the symbol. Now let's see if now is the name of the company Canoe. Yeah, it's Canoe. How do you spell the company um, name? Let me find it. C A N O O Canoe. Canoe. Yeah. Now I, I maybe I made no, I didn't make up the ticker. See, it's right there. Okay, Canoe Holdings. So Limited. I think right now it's private, and I think oh. I, okay, or maybe they're doing a, um, a SPAC, a, SPAC. a special That's purpose acquisition vehicle. Thing. I had to learn when I went, what is a SPAC? So I went and figured that out, not entirely, but in some I think we should sense. do a separate segment on SPACs because they're, they're coming along more often now. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we, we should both do our research and yes. we can come back and have a chat about that. Okay. But SPACs, special purpose acquisition vehicle, are yes. a new way for companies to get public with a bit less um, cost and time frame. So, but we'll put a pin in that. Yeah. I mean, you could still talk about the companies you like, but yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll come back on the SPAC yes. discussion. And speaking of, yeah. So anyways, um, I think uh, there's some other EV, no, here's the thing. There's a lot of EV companies or in some way EV. In so the industry. Some of them, yeah. So Sector. we've got some that are like Neo. They're like the you know, Chinese Tesla, we've got the Xpex, Xpev, I don't know, but that's- Another Chinese company. Yes, I, I think they're going for IPOs. I wish I would have, yes, they're coming out. They're, so we're waiting for their IPO. Okay, so she's, she's yeah. got a list here of stock. She's electric vehicle yes. sector company. So they're not necessarily all making an EV, no. but they, they're part of the- They're, the, they're part of the new the EV drive train. world. <laughs> okay. EV world. There's the Lordstown, and they're concentrating on EV pickups. It okay. Seems. Yeah. Okay. And now, and, and none of these companies I've never looked really deep into. Yeah. This is just a broad. This is just what you found, deal. and Anything you're gonna go I look at. is broad, so you gotta do your own research. <laughs> okay. Do your own research. Do your own always. Um. So this is that one that you were talking about. That's, but that's not it yet. Oh, we're going okay. Later. Okay. okay. Um. But they can't see. But you're talking. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. But anyway, so and then Those, that's I think this one is a. I think this one is also an EV. Let me look. Luminar, 
now and I usually write down what they are. <laughs> I, I just, I was, you know. but they're Luminous. waiting for the SPAC IPO again. Um, okay. But they, and that's another, uh, is that a Canadian company? No, no. Okay. So Lumina, we're looking, uh, we're maybe Lumina is not the right one. Okay. That's not EV, I don't think. Okay. But, Never mind Lumina. We don't but, know what it does. Okay, and speaking of can't EV, tell you about it. the thing is there's all these companies that are EV now. Now there's one company that I know of that I heard, I think a couple of days ago on Scott Fox somewhere or CNBC somewhere that Lind, Linda, PLC, PLC is it's a, a British hydrogen thing. based. Oh, so that's a totally different oh, yeah. technology. And I remember when I was in university 20 years ago, um, they were talking about that. They were researching that. Oh, yeah. In the, and they were saying that hydrogen, they can split the hydrogen. And um, I think it's the holy so grail hard. of power. But yeah. if they can figure out how to make it safe and stable. Yeah. But I've not looked into that in any sort of detail but yeah hydrogen powered cars is something that is supposed to be one of those dreams that people have yeah that it doesn't to, lose oh, any works. energy when you when you make that i don't know transaction combustion whatever it does <laughs> yeah you know so okay know. so well, that's we'll, one thing. we'll keep an eye on these we we've mentioned them we will see if they go public and then if and when they do we'll let you know how that's how that's all coming along yeah um the last sector that i think i'm super keen on and i've convinced belinda to be keen on as well only on the stock market side uh, <laughs> only on the stock market side yeah, only on the stock market i will side. not give up it's the plant-based or cell-based meat industry and I'm a vegetarian and she's not. So I am from Calgary, Alberta. We eat steak every week, multiple I, times. I'm working on her. I'm working on her. <laughs> anyway, um, Beyond Meat has done phenomenal. And I'm super excited about that from a humanity perspective, from a climate change perspective, and from a investment perspective, just on the entire space. And um, there's a lot more besides meat that is coming out, um, or beef, shall we say. There's, um, um, actually I'm doing an interview at the end of September with two female founders of a company called Shiok Meats, which is a cellular-based seafood business. So they will actually make um, seafood, depending, you know, which, which type of seafood. It's not seafood in general, but specific types. So um, let's say lobster um, in, in a lab. But so it will be uh, cellular based, not plant based. And so I'll be interviewing them at the end of September. And cool. actually, maybe you and I can do a further segment on the alternative okay. meat and yes. dairy I think space. we should do a whole show on that. We should do a whole show. Yeah. Because there's so much coming, there's so much to talk about, and we can we can run through the entire genre and kind of let you know what's happening on the private and slowly the public side, because there's not a lot of publicly traded alternative meat companies, although... Yet. Yet, for sure. They are lining up coming. on... That's I the think. only airport that's taken off right now. <laughs> I the, think that's is the plant-based IPOs. Um, and then, um, yeah, so that's that's got a lot of opportunity. However, there are some publicly traded companies that are heavily getting into the space. Um, Heinz is um, oh, yeah. investing in the space or, or they're also developing their own products. Huh. Nestle as well. Um, anyway, we'll, I think we'll do a segment on that. Okay. So today we kind of covered some of the bigger names, the, the tech stocks and things like that. Do you have an opinion on Google? The only opinion is I wish I would have got in a yes. long time ago. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I also wish I would have gotten in a long time ago on that. Um, okay. Well, I think that was kind of a good, a good uh, yeah. overview of our first of our first uh, our first session, and uh, we will hopefully get this up. I will try and publish these very quickly so that all the information we're talking about is relatively fresh. Yeah. And so it's not exactly. you know, three weeks later. Anyway, um, thank you very much, Bull Market Hi, Belinda. Yeah. It's been fun. I look forward to the next one. We're going to try and do these twice a month. It's, I suppose, give or take what's going on yeah. with kids and, and life. But we'll try and do this twice a month to keep you updated. We'll try and cover different sectors and uh, let you know what, what trades Belinda's doing. 
and um, yeah, what she's learned. I'll try and teach her a few things as well. Oh, no. <laughs> so she's not a danger to herself and her friends. <laughs> you can teach me on the show. Okay, do a do a a, a drumstick spin for everybody. Wow. One. I don't know. This is kind of a light stick. Don't hit me in the face. <laughs> Money maker. No, it's a guitar stick. It's a guitar. It's a guitar. Oh my god! I cannot believe I called it a guitar stick. Anyway. Take care, guys, and we will see you soon. See ya.